One of the most pronounced advantages American stealth fighters have lies tucked away deep within the fuselage, hidden from line of sight and even infrared detection. Each of the turbofan engines tucked away within the F-22 and the F-35 produce more thrust than the J-85s that powered the SR-71. But these engines do so much more than propel these aircraft to supersonic speeds. Designed to mitigate radar, heat, and even acoustic detection, these powerful engines have stood without peer for more than a quarter century. But in 2023, both Russian and Chinese stealth fighter programs took the leap into fifth generation turbofan technology. But as the Su-57 and J-20 continue to close the technological gap with their American adversaries, the United States has a new engine in the works, one they hope will change the game all over again. Let's talk about the race to field the most advanced stealth fighter engines in history. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Before we dive in, let's talk about a very cool sponsor, Air Corps Aviation. Based in Bemidji, Minnesota, Air Corps Aviation has been helping to keep aviation history alive since 2008. This firm specializes in everything from full-scale restorations of legendary World War II aircraft to supporting modern aviation and aerospace efforts thanks to a broad spectrum of in-house expertise in everything from CAD, engineering, and custom fabrication to welding, painting, and airframe inspections. This 60-person company has an incredible restoration portfolio that includes amazing aircraft like P-47 Thunderbolts and one of my personal favorites, a number of P-51 Mustangs. But what's even cooler is that this 60-person company has been so successful that they are rapidly growing. Right now, Air Corps Aviation has a bunch of full-time positions open. They're looking for people to work in CAD, engineering, restoration, fabrication, and quality assurance. This is an opportunity to get your hands dirty with legitimate aviation history. Now, these full-time jobs come with full-time benefits, including health insurance, paid time off, retirement funds, and maybe best of all, a four-day work week. So if you want to see more of what Air Corps Aviation is up to, go to aircoraviation.com. And if you think you have what it takes to help Air Corps Aviation keep these World War II legends in the sky, make sure to go to aircoraviation.com slash careers. And when you apply, make sure to tell them I sent you, because Lord knows the next time I'm covering a World War II aircraft, I could always use another expert in my Rolodex. While maybe a bit too technical to garner the attention that it deserves, the truth is a stealth fighter is only as good as the engine that powers it. And until just recently, the United States has been the only nation on the planet capable of producing turbofan engines purpose-built for stealth applications in sufficient numbers to actually equip a high-end fighter fleet. Despite being in service for years already, both Russian and Chinese stealth fighters today are powered by updated versions of the same decades-old engines that power their non-stealth fourth-generation fighters, having a pronounced impact on their performance, but an even bigger one on their stealth. But in April of 2023, the Aero Engine Corporation of China, or AECC, announced that serial production of China's long-awaited WS-15 turbofan engine was finally set to begin. And even amid its stalled invasion of Ukraine and stagnating economic sanctions, Russia managed to follow suit just a few months later, announcing that their own homegrown fifth-generation engine, known to some as the Saturn AL-51 and to others as the Product 30, would also see serial production starting in 2024. Now, in both cases, these new engines can provide these stealth fighters with a significant boost in thrust, speed, and aerobatic performance, but they could have a much bigger effect on these jets' stealth, both against radar and infrared detection. And while the precise capability limits of these new Russian and Chinese turbofan engines are certainly subject to debate, the broad consensus is clear. The strategic advantage advanced American turbofan technology has long provided is beginning to erode, but maybe not for long. 
As far back as 2007, the U.S. began work on the next revolutionary leap in turbofan technology, culminating in parallel adaptive cycle engine programs now underway within the secretive confines of both GE and Pratt & Whitney facilities. These new turbofan engines, which started testing in 2021, are already outpacing their predecessors in power output, fuel economy, thermal management, and a whole lot more. And they're now on pace to be fielded alongside the sixth generation of fighters that are headed for service by the close of the decade. But with China's J-20 production numbers already eclipsing America's entire F-22 fleet, and maybe as many as a dozen other stealth fighter programs in development all around the world today, the margin for error in maintaining America's turbofan advantage may be more narrow now than ever. To put it plainly, America is all in on adaptive cycle engine technology, so if it proves to be a bust, Uncle Sam could find himself playing catch-up in the air power realm for the first time in decades. But to understand where this stealth fighter engine race is going, we need to know where it started. And to do that, we need to look all the way back to 1983, when the U.S. Air Force first pitted General Electric and Pratt and & Whitney against one another to field an advanced new engine to power what would become the world's first stealth fighter. Now, General Electric was the clear front-runner in this race at the time, having already modified their older fourth-generation engines for stealthier duties aboard both the F-117 Nighthawk and the B-2 Spirit, both of which are powered by non-afterburning versions of engines already found in American fighters, like the F-A-18 Hornet or the F-16 Fighting Falcon. But the Air Force was looking for a whole lot more than just an upgraded 4th gen engine this time, so both firms came back with clean sheet designs. GE's incredibly forward-leaning YF-120 engine was actually the better performer, thanks in large part to its groundbreaking variable cycle design that used bypass tubes to allow the engine to function like a low-bypass turbofan during most flight regimes, but then it could transition to nearly complete turbojet functionality at higher altitudes where that would be more efficient. But this high-technology approach also came with a high weight penalty and a whole lot more complexity than Pratt & Whitney's more grounded but still groundbreaking proposal. Pratt & Whitney's YF-119 may have been a bit more pragmatic, but it came with no shortage of technological advancements. They leaned on previous developments derived from the U.S. Army's Advanced Turbine Engine Gas Generator Program to help them design turbine fan blades that were shaped for optimal efficiency. Then they turned to the Joint Technology Demonstration Engine Program to help them reduce the number of compressor stages required in the engine to match the same power output. While previous turbofans like Pratt & Whitney's F-100 had 10 compressor stages, their new engine had just six. Now, to put that in terms anyone can understand, that means this new engine produced 22% more thrust with 40% fewer parts. The YF-119's multivariable linear quadratic regulator control system allowed for extremely precise engine control across all flight regimes, allowing for maximized efficiency and performance. And while not often seen as sexy enough to celebrate in headlines, it also came with a very proactive management program and toolset, along with reliability tracking systems like an inline oil debris sensor to assess engine wear in real time and further streamline and reduce both maintenance and repair requirements. This new engine's three-zone afterburner placed its fuel injectors in thick curved veins meant to block line of sight for improved stealth, and then those veins were coated in early ceramic-based radar absorbent material to even further reduce radar detection. The engine nozzles, which offered 20-degree thrust vectoring for incredible aerobatic performance, greater control at high altitudes, and more effective flying at higher angles of attack, also used wedge-shaped flaps to both reduce their radar return and to facilitate the active mixing of outgoing engine exhaust with ambient air to reduce the detectable heat produced by the engines. The YF-119's combination of simplicity, reliability, performance, and stealth 
ultimately won Pratt the contract. And by the time the YF-22 and its YF-119 engines matured into the F-22 and F-119 engines, they represented the most advanced airframe engine combination of any fighter in history. These engines gave the F-22 thrust vectoring maneuverability that was unprecedented in an American fighter, as well as twice the thrust of a fourth-gen turbofan during supersonic flight. Not only could these new engines produce more thrust under afterburner than the SR-71s could, but they could produce more thrust without their afterburners than the F-15C could with its afterburners at full tilt. These engines are so powerful that the F-22 can not only supercruise or fly at supersonic speeds without using its afterburners, but it's been reported to supercruise at speeds as high as Mach 1.8, meaning the F-22 can fly faster without its afterburners engaged than many other fighters can fly at all. Put simply, the F-119 engine was every bit the performer that the F-22's airframe and avionics came to be, and together, these systems gave the U.S. a decisive air power advantage that still holds to this day. The F-119 was such a success that it went on to become the basis for the Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine that powers today's F-35s. Though the F-35 is a single-engine jet, so they updated the engine to produce even more power. The F-135 engine pumps out an astonishing 28,000 pounds of thrust without afterburner and 43,000 with the afterburner lit, providing enough brute force to give the F-35 a very respectable thrust-to-weight ratio of about 1.07 with a standard combat load. And while the F-135 suffered similar technical setbacks to the F-35 it went into, it eventually emerged as one of the most reliable turbofans on the planet, reaching a 95% fleet-wide engine readiness rate by 2019 and seeing a 50% reduction in overall production costs by the 500th engine produced. In 2024, the F-135 is getting another big upgrade to provide greater cooling for the Block 4 F-35. But as capable as these engines truly are, they are no longer without peers. Russia's premier stealth fighter, the Su-57, has led a troubled developmental and production cycle, resulting in a platform that's widely recognized as the worst of its generation. But the truth is, direct comparisons to incredibly capable jets like the F-22 has to some extent skewed perceptions of what is otherwise a pretty significant leap in Russian aviation technology. After all, the Su-57 may be thousands of times larger than the F-22 on enemy radar screens, but it is some 15 to 30 times smaller than the Su-27, marking a pretty significant improvement in aircraft design. By far, the Su-57 program's biggest failing has been production volume, with fewer than 20 serial production Su-57s in service today, despite the fact that the aircraft's been flying for more than a decade already. But a close second to that might be Russia's struggle to field the engine that was meant to power this jet. The relative handful of Su-57s Russia has in service are all powered by an updated version of the same thrust vectoring AL-41 F1 engine that also powers their fourth generation Su-35S. Now this turbofan has been flying in one form or another since the 1980s, though it did see an updated engine control system for the Su-57. Now under Afterburner, these engines produce a respectable 32,000 pounds of thrust each, and that's almost enough to catch up with the F-22s. But without the Afterburner, they come nowhere close, producing just 19,900 pounds of thrust as compared to the F-119's 26,000. Now this is enough power to allow the Su-57 to supercruise at around Mach 1.3, which, interestingly, actually falls short of the American requirements for that title. Because the majority of American fourth-generation fighters can maintain low supersonic speeds after disengaging the afterburner, the U.S. Air Force doesn't consider it supercruising until Mach 1.5. But power production is the least of their concerns, because these fourth-generation engines were not designed for stealth applications, and as such, they make very little effort to reduce their radar or infrared returns. Now, this obviously dramatically limits the stealth achievable by the Su-57, and it's also where their new engines, the AL-51, could have the biggest impact. 
As is so often the case with Russian technology, there's very little to go on here other than claims made by Russian state-owned media and the manufacturer themselves. But based on those claims, which we should take with a big grain of salt, the AL-51 engine appears to make a big step toward parity with the F-119 and F-135 powering America's stealth fighters. According to manufacturer claims, the AL-51 produces about 24,300 pounds of thrust dry and about 37,500 under afterburner. And since the program began, Russian media has also touted significant improvements in maintainability and fuel efficiency. But interestingly, there's been very little discussion about improvements in stealth. The one thing we can say for sure is that with the transition to this new engine, the Su-57 will go from 3D thrust vector control today to 2D thrust vector control, like the F-22 Raptors. And that likely suggests a transition toward much stealthier nozzles that may help reduce radar return and maybe even infrared detection as well. Now, Russia claims that every new Su-57 starting this year will be built with these new engines, but then Russia has claimed a lot of things about these engines over the years and about the Su-57 in general, so we'll have to wait and see. The bigger threat to America's turbofan advantage definitely comes in the form of China's WS-15. Similar to Russia, China has struggled for years to develop and field the fifth-generation engines that were meant to power their stealth fighters. And as a result, all of the stealth fighters China has built to date are powered by one of a handful of updated fourth-generation engine designs. Initially, J-20s were powered by Russian-sourced AL-31 FM-2 engines, right up until around 2015 when China transitioned toward their own home-built equivalent that they dubbed the WS-10. It wasn't until 2022 that China's long-awaited WS-15 fifth-generation engines finally made their way into flight trials. But unlike Russia's stealth fighter fleet, which amounts to little more than parade fodder, China's rapidly growing fleet of Chengdu J-20s now outnumber American F-22s. The J-20 is understood to offer superior stealth and avionics technology as compared to Russia's Su-57, even if they do fall short of the technological bar set by advanced aircraft like the F-35. And with this combination of capability and production volume, it means that adding powerful and stealthy new engines to the J-20 represents more than just another headline story. With China's production numbers, we could genuinely be talking about a significant increase in strategic capability. Now, specifics about the WS-15 are murky thanks to an utter lack of transparency in Chinese state-controlled media, but it's believed to have roots that stretch all the way back to the 1990s. Various media reports over the years have indicated that these new engines will produce 36,000 pounds of thrust, or maybe even 40,000 pounds of thrust under afterburner, making the J-20 the most powerful stealth fighter on the planet. Media reporting also suggests improved fuel efficiency and super cruising capabilities to boot. But more important than an increase in power are the undisclosed details about improved stealth. U.S. intelligence assessments suggest that China has prioritized not just performance, but radar and infrared detection mitigation in this new engine design, which could make what's already the most potent adversary stealth fighter on the planet a whole lot more capable. And while it can't be said for sure that these new engines will match the F-119 or F-135 engines in terms of both stealth and performance, if Chinese claims are to be believed, the WS-15 may well be a legitimate peer for the stealth turbofans that power America's stealth fighters. But as you already know, there are a few things the U.S. defense apparatus likes more than a technological face-off. And this is one challenge Uncle Sam saw coming. Back in 2016, the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center's Propulsion Directorate quietly awarded new developmental contracts to GE and Pratt & Whitney to field the next generation of turbofan engines, with the intent on using them to power the next generation of stealth fighters. And the way they aim to achieve that next leap in capability is by throwing out a compromise that's been inherent to almost every engine design throughout aviation history to date. You see, today's turbofan engines have to balance power output against long-range efficiency. And as a result, the turbofans designed for, say, cargo aircraft like spy planes tend to prioritize fuel economy over power generation. 
Fighter engines, on the other hand, usually prioritize high-end performance over range. But the Air Force is tired of compromise, so they launched the Adaptive Engine Transition Program to do away with this problem. Using the F-135 and its 43,000 pounds of thrust as their basis, the Air Force asked for a 10% increase in thrust output, a 25% increase in range, and a substantial increase in thermal management. Now, in order to pull that off, these new adaptive cycle engines are designed to operate in different functional modes. When the pilot needs the engine's peak performance in combat, they can lean hard on the throttle, and the engine's management system will take that cue to switch into heavy burning, high thrust mode for maximum power. But conversely, while out on a combat air patrol, the engine will stay in the high efficiency, low burning mode to stretch the mileage or loiter time provided by each gallon of fuel. And in May of 2021, GE's XA100 adaptive cycle engine was the first to roar to life in testing, immediately eclipsing all of the Air Force's target goals. I spoke to GE Edison Works General Manager of Advanced Combat Engines, David Tweedy at the time, and he told me that they saw more than a 10% increase in thrust throughout nearly the entire flight envelope, with as much as a 20% increase in a number of areas. But it wasn't just in thrust that GE knocked it out of the park, they also reported a massive boost in efficiency. I'll quote Tweedy himself. When you translate that to what it means to the platform, it's 30% more range or 50% more loiter time, depending on how you want to utilize that fuel burn improvement, and a significant increase in acceleration and combat capability with the increased thrust. Now, I want to step in right now to emphasize that we're talking about improvements over the F-135, which is already the most powerful and advanced turbofan in any fighter on the planet. But what may be an even bigger deal is GE is reporting twice the thermal management of the F-135. Now, this matters because heat is currently a limiting factor in electrical power production in fighters. Engines like the F-135 can actually produce more power than we permit because the heat created in the process is so significant that it runs the risk of damaging the fighter's fragile radar-absorbent skin or even the fuselage itself. Twice the thermal management means it's potentially possible to produce twice the electrical power, paving the way for directed energy laser weapons and missile countermeasures, advanced new electronic warfare capabilities, and a whole lot more. For a while, the Pentagon even considered adding these advanced new engines to the F-35 as a part of the forthcoming Block 4 upgrade, which would have been a big deal for the U.S. Navy, who's working tirelessly to find a way to extend the ranges of its carrier fighters. But ultimately, the DoD opted for a less expensive route with simply updating the existing F-135. Five months after GE's adaptive cycle tests, Pratt & Whitney followed suit with their own new adaptive cycle engine called the XA-101, though its performance capabilities are not quite as clear. And these two firms are still duking it out to determine who will get to power the next-generation air dominance fighter in active development, though neither the XA-100 nor the XA-101 will directly find its way into the fuselage of these new jets. Instead, the winning firm will build new engines, purpose-built for the application, based on the technologies demonstrated in this adaptive cycle program. And based on publicly available information, it looks very likely that we will see these sixth-generation engines enter service right alongside, or maybe inside, the sixth-generation fighters they're meant for. So, while China and Russia may finally be closing the gap on one of America's most important, if little discussed, stealth fighter advantages, the U.S. now seems positioned to restake its claim as the undisputed leader in fighter engine technology in the not-too-distant future. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.